Tonight, Saskatchewan has its first case of monkeypox. Regina Home Hardware, how can I help you? Plus, after several moves and generations of family ownership, a local hardware store in Northwest Regina is closing up shop. This is CBC Saskatchewan News. It is Wednesday, July 13th, and the CBC Saskatchewan News starts right now. Good evening and thanks for joining us. The first case of monkeypox has been reported in our province. The government confirmed the case this afternoon. The Ministry of Health is not giving any information about the infected person or where they live. It said contact tracing has begun, but it's believed the infection did happen outside the province. Anyone who has been outside the province where monkeypox has been found should check themselves for symptoms. Those include a fever, headache, swollen lymph nodes, chills, exhaustion, and skin lesions. Monkeypox is rarely fatal, but ministry officials say residents should be vigilant about monitoring for cases. I think the important thing is to recognize that this is a risk. Um, like I said, the risk is low um, to residents in Saskatchewan and Canada generally. Um, but for people who are exposed to monkeypox, for people who develop monkeypox as an infectious disease, it can cause complications. The symptoms um, may be severe in terms of uh, the presentation. Um, so it is important that people are able to receive the correct diagnosis, the correct treatment, and that contacts can be notified as well. People who have traveled and have symptoms are asked to call 811 or their doctor. Saskatchewan is the fifth province to detect monkeypox, and there are nearly 500 reported cases in Canada. The latest wastewater research shows the COVID-19 viral load is increasing in the cities of Regina, Saskatoon, Prince Albert and North Battleford. Experts believe it's the early signs of a seventh wave driven by the BA4 and BA5 subvariants. That has some people under 50 concerned about their inability to get a second booster shot in Saskatchewan. Alexander Quant reports. And I feel like we've been left dead in the water. We are being left unsafe. This is going to crush our health care system. Gabrielle Bird wants a fourth dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. The Regina resident says they want to visit their sick grandmother in hospital in order to resolve some outstanding family issues. But Bird says that they don't feel safe without a second booster dose. And the fact that she's in there for something respiratory, I'm like, am I losing my one chance? to properly make amends and put, find peace and put it at rest. Bird is not alone. They're one of more than 510,000 adults in Saskatchewan that do not qualify for a second booster dose. As of right now, only people 50 and older can get a fourth shot and only four months after their third dose. It's a source of frustration for many that spoke with CBC News. Just as a precaution to try and keep myself uh, safe and uh, ideally to mitigate some risk to my son who again can't get vaccinated for some time. You know I'm 37 years old so I'm not that far from 50 but at the same time um, it's been more than six months since I got my first booster or my third dose and I just don't fully understand um, why the general public is being kept in the dark about the eligibility. Some other provinces are expanding eligibility for booster doses. For example, Ontario and Newfoundland and Labrador are opening it up to anyone 18 and over. But Saskatchewan is staying the course. In a statement to CBC News, the Ministry of Health says it plans to open up fourth dose eligibility in the fall. A seventh wave driven by the Omicron BA4 and BA5 subvariants has already begun in Ontario, and experts say it is only a matter of time until it starts here. Nazim Muhajirin is a professor of community health and epidemiology at the University of Saskatchewan. He says the latest evidence shows the immunity people have built up from vaccinations and previous infections may not be enough for the sub-variants. That's why booster shots remain a powerful and useful tool. When we know that vaccine is a very important tool, it's probably one of the, you know, that's where we build around the vaccines. You know, vaccine is, is our, our trump card, but it is not the only card on our hand that we need to play. Muhajirin wants the province to expand booster availability now, and he wants the province to consider re-implementing mandatory masking and physical distancing when the next wave arrives. 
Alexander Kwan, CBC News, Regina. A serious criminal case involving alleged sex crimes against care home residents in Saskatchewan was briefly back before the court today. Supporters gathered at the community center in Ralston to show solidarity with the alleged victims of Brett Gabona. He's charged with sexually assaulting five care home residents in Hepburn over a 17-year period starting in 1992. The victims are people with severe cognitive and physical disabilities. The court matter has been delayed because Gabona says he's having issues figuring out a lawyer. Rick Boguski's brother, Daryl, is one of the victims named in the case. Rick says it was emotional to come face to face with Gabona today. Daryl reacted actually in the courtroom. And I've been assuring Daryl all the way along that he doesn't have to worry about Brent Gabona anymore, that he's safe with me. But the fact that we have to keep coming and dealing with this so-called justice system when there's no justice is just over the top. Rick says the delays are beyond frustrating. He says it is also unfair that other residents from the care home where Gabona worked are not being investigated by police as potential victims. The matter comes back before the court in two weeks. In a surprise move, the Bank of Canada has increased its trend-setting interest rate by a full percentage point. It now stands at 2.5%. An increase of this magnitude in one meeting is very unusual. It reflects very unusual economic circumstances. It's the biggest interest rate hike in more than 20 years as the central bank works to drive down inflation. Today's increase had been expected to come in at three quarters of a percent or 75 basis points. The increase will affect Canadians with variable rate mortgages and lines of credit. The Bank of Canada says inflation here is being driven by consumer demand. It hopes that by making borrowing more expensive, that demand will ease and allow supply to catch up. This afternoon, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders apologized to Ottawa quarterback Jeremiah Masoli for the comments and actions of defensive lineman Garrett Marino. But the apology only comes after Masoli shamed them online and five days after the incident in question. Last Friday, Marino delivered a reckless hit on the Red Blacks QB. Marino celebrated his tackle and allegedly uttered racial slurs. Masoli was seriously injured and now requires surgery. Last night, Masoli came out firing on Twitter. He said, quote, I've seen the poor and uninformed excuses given by Saskatchewan's head coach and no apology from Garrett Marino, Coach Dickinson, or any executive from Saskatchewan. He went on to say, quote, The worst of it is the vile and disrespectful type of behavior and racial insults that were made towards me more than once. Today, the Rough Riders posted their apology and one from Marino, too. The defensive lineman says he did not intend to injure Masoli. He doesn't actually call his comments racist and said he said he made, quote, an insensitive and culturally stereotypical remark. I hope I can be forgiven for that misunderstanding, end quote. The defensive lineman says he will not appeal his four-game suspension. After several moves and generations of family ownership, Regina Home Hardware is closing. And as Jesse Anton reports, it will be missed by its workers and the community alike. It's business as usual at this family-owned hardware store in Regina's Northwest. But by the end of this summer, no more keys will be cut. And no more customers will be shopping down these aisles. And the reason? Well, Lori can answer that one. I can answer it. Yeah. I'm retiring. Siblings Monty Buzash and Lori Minky are closing down their home hardware, marking the end of an era. Their parents, Andy and Ida Buzash, first opened the store back in 1984. It was in downtown Regina to start, and then their children took it over in 2001. And that's when they relocated from downtown here to Rochdale Boulevard. Linda Pomodi was hired by the family as a cashier more than 30 years ago. She's now retired, but had stayed on for one shift a week because she loved her job. I like the staff, and I like the workers, I like the, the, the bosses. They were very good to me, and I like the customers. Regina Home Hardware, how can I help you? Like many others, Megan Stenson found her first part-time job here and saved up for post-secondary education. 
But like the store's name implies, that soon turned into a home away from home. I've been here so long, it doesn't even feel like work anymore. It was a family that started it, and it's a family that atmosphere that we, we created here and uh, carried on. And that feeling hits close to home for Sydney Buzash. She's worked at the store with her dad for the last four years, and Sydney says she's too young to carry on the family business, and it makes her sad to know it will soon be gone forever. And this store isn't part of my identity. Like, I don't know if I would be the same person if I hadn't been here my whole life and worked here. For longtime customers like Celine Holloway, driving by and not seeing that big red sign will also take some getting used to. And I think it's really going to leave a huge hole in a lot of people's shopping lists. As for the Booz Ash and Minky families, they say it will be more like a big hole in the heart. Like the saying goes, all good things come to an end. Yeah. Jesse Anton, CBC News, Regina. This is now Pat Fiaco Plaza. It's been called Pat's Patio and Pat's Porch by locals for quite some time, but today, City Square Plaza in downtown Regina was officially renamed Pat Fiaco Plaza. The former Regina mayor served four terms between 2000 and 2012. Fiaco was involved in the construction of the plaza during his time in office. The motion to rename the space was introduced by Michael Fougere back in July of 2020 as a way to honor Fiaco's work to promote civic pride. Fiaco is perhaps best known for his I Love Regina campaign. Stay with us. We'll be back after the break. There is a chance of severe storms in some parts of Saskatchewan tonight, and those storms could bring lightning strikes. For one ranching family near Mancota, lightning proved deadly last weekend, killing 28 cattle. As Bonnie Allen reports, it's a reminder to take it seriously. And a warning, the story contains images of dead livestock. The Briere family has spent the past several days digging giant holes in their pasture to bury 28 head of cattle struck down by lightning last weekend. All of them purebred black Angus, including one herd sire, 13 calves, and 14 cows, many of them pregnant. Some of my better cows were there. Well, now I'll never get them back. Ranchers Glenn and Darla Briere weren't home when a thunderstorm moved through the area. They suspect their cattle had huddled up against a fence. They're all laying along the fence there. 570 feet, my neighbor stepped it off, and they were scattered all along there. The old saying, when thunder roars, go indoors, doesn't help cattle grazing out in pasture. And while mass fatalities are rare, experts say the sheer frequency of lightning means deaths are inevitable. I mean, we detect two and a half billion, billion with a B, lightning events around the world every year. Globally, about 24,000 people per year are killed by lightning and nearly a quarter million are injured. Meteorologist Chris Vagaski is a lightning safety expert. He says there are several ways lightning can injure or kill people and animals. Getting directly hit by lightning is one. Lightning can also hit the ground or a tall object, and the electric current can move through the ground or jump to a nearby victim. But in this case, Vagaski says the cattle likely all had contact with the fence. The fence was... Uh, struck by lightning and the electric charge ran down the fence and hit each of the, the cattle that was standing against the fence. Um, so that's called conduction. Since the storm, the Briers have received a lot of support. Old friends, new friends, people we don't even know just reaching out and giving us their support and their well wishes and yeah, just it's been overwhelming. Very. And this is a gruesome reminder of why one should take cover in a house or vehicle during a thunderstorm. Bonnie Allen, CBC News. This weather update is brought to you by Capital GMC Buick Cadillac. The exclusive export event is back. And Ethan Williams is in now for a look at our forecast. And with all this heat and humidity, 
it feels like it's really only a matter of time before things really do get stormy again. Yeah, that's right, Sam, and your uh, weather senses are correct. Uh, we do have storms possible and actually happening this evening. Uh, and in case you're wondering, you're not alone in thinking that it has been quite stormy so far this summer. I caught up with Terry Lang at Environment Canada, who says the jet stream is the culprit for that. And she says it's been in this consistent troughing pattern for the last while. It's allowing sort of these upper weather systems to come through. And what that does is that acts as a trigger. Um, these, whether it be a cold front or um, a dry line or any one of these low pressure systems that move through, those act as triggers for the atmosphere. So, and what we've noticed with the atmosphere this summer is that uh, we've got lots of humidity around, uh, which is different than the last couple of years, which is why we've had such slow summers for severe weather over the last two or three years. And with all these storms, we are getting tornadoes as well. We've had 15 so far in the province. 11 of those have been in the past couple of weeks. But we're not setting any records for tornadoes or anything like that. In fact, the average uh, number of tornadoes in the province in a year is 17. And, uh, you know, we've had years where we've only had two and uh, some years recently where we've been in the high 30s. So this is a pretty average year for that. And you saw in that last report that Bonnie did uh, that lightning can be a, quite an issue as well. And we do have some lightning stats from Environment and Climate Change Canada. In the month of June, we saw over 84,000 strikes of lightning, and that's actually below average. Usually in June, we see around 148,000 of them. In July so far, we've seen over 112,000, but look at how much we usually get in July, at nearly 341,000 strikes, and likely some of those happening right now. We do have a severe thunderstorm warning in place for the far north for Stony Rapids, Fond du Lac, Black Lake. There was a storm that was moving uh, near Stony Rapids to the northeast, producing some uh, sizable hail and some heavy rain and strong winds. So if you're in the area, head indoors if you are there. Severe thunderstorm watches for a good swath of the province now. And we also, those are over top of those uh, heat warnings that are in place too. And uh, here's why those warnings are in place. We're still sitting at 30 degrees at some places at six o'clock. And you can really feel that in the south and central portion of the province where right now we're hovering around 30 degrees. Saskatoon and Maple Creek, uh, the hot spots right now sitting at 31. But with the, hum the Humidex uh, level, that's feeling even hotter into the mid 30s. A little while ago, it was 38 or feeling like 38 in Saskatoon, but low to mid 30s generally at this point province wide. Now, storms expected to fire up right now. As you can see, we uh, have uh, some storms producing in the north part of the province. That's all part of this low pressure system and the associated fronts that are coming through. And as the cold front slices through, as we go through tonight, storms fire begin firing off in the southern half of the province. We get to oh, the uh, overnight hours, excuse me, and it looks like those shift to the eastern part of uh, the south and central region of the province, and some could be lingering as we get into tomorrow morning as well, mid-morning down toward Estevan and up toward the Yorkton-Melville area. But then that moves out, a clear day tomorrow with high pressure back in place, and then Friday a chance of showers and thunderstorms again in south and central Saskatchewan. And now a look at uh, our extended forecast in Regina. Again, a nice day tomorrow, I think, will be a degree or two cooler after after that cold front moves through, but really won't cool us down all that much. A very hot weekend in store with sunny conditions and uh, very high levels of uh, humidity as well. Saskatoon will see a bright sunny day tomorrow, a high of 28 very hot through the weekend, and then showers and thunderstorms return. So I have a feeling, Sam, that next week uh, my job will be busy once again as those uh, thunderstorms begin to fire off. Your job is always busy, Ethan. <laughs> sure feels you. like it. <laughs> Thanks. You bet. See you guys. A cool treat to beat the heat for some lucky animals at the Madrid Zoo. Zookeepers gave up popsicles with a twist to hydrate the animals amid a scorching heat wave. A panda took a shine to a watermelon popsicle. Lions preferred to devour frozen delights containing beef. We'll be back after the break. There is more anger over the police response to the deadly school shooting in Uvalde, Texas in May. It's over surveillance video that was released, which shows what officers did and did not do as a gunman killed 19 students and two teachers. It was made public just hours before a gun control rally on Capitol Hill. Katie Simpson reports. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. 
Hundreds of parents, survivors of gun violence and activists are here on Capitol Hill and they have a message for lawmakers. They are angry, they are frustrated and they are emotional. They want to see a ban on assault style weapons, especially in light of the surge in gun violence that has been experienced in the United States. Uh, in recent months, in recent weeks, there have been more than 300 mass shootings in the United States this year alone so far. Now, we spoke with some people in the crowd today and they describe what it's like to live in America in this moment. We're afraid. We're afraid for we're afraid to be standing here. We're constantly looking up, looking for shooters, afraid that a bomb squad's here. We're it, we're in constant fear and it's not just us who are so privileged to be here and talk about it and talk to you about it. It's people who everywhere, everywhere. It's mothers everywhere. I don't know any mother, any parent who's not afraid right now to be living here. This rally is taking place less than 24 hours after security footage of the shooting at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas, was published by a Texas newspaper and a Texas television station. It is 77 minutes of footage. It is extremely difficult to watch. And in those moments, you can see when police first enter the building, they hear gunshots for the first time and retreat down a hallway. And that documents the 77 minutes they were inside that building before they actually entered the room and ended that massacre. There has been mixed, very strong reaction to the release of that footage. Some family members are deeply distraught that they did not see it first. Others are so angry with the actions of police that even though people knew the police response, it's already been highly criticized uh, and is under investigation. But to actually see what was going on inside, it has left them even more heartbroken. Katie Simpson, CBC News, Washington. And Ethan is back with one last look at tonight's weather. And some uh, severe thunderstorms possible tonight in the province, Sam, so keep an eye out for that if uh, you're really anywhere across the province. But by the time we get to 8 a.m. tomorrow in Regina, we're looking at some nice temperatures. The uh, sun will come out and wind gusts won't be too bad either. We'll get to the noon hour, mainly sunny conditions as well, and it will be around 26 degrees, a little uh, cooler than we were today. Saskatoon, sunny conditions in 19 as we get to 8 a.m., and we'll keep that sun around as we head to the noon hour at 24. And if the showers and thunderstorms clear where you are tonight as the sun sets, you could likely see the July full supermoon, the buck moon called that because uh, this is usually when the antlers of male deer or buck are fully grown, Sam. So uh, some great sights to possibly see tonight in the night sky. All right. Thanks, Ethan. You're welcome. And before we leave you tonight, there is a new vehicle cruising along the river in Saskatoon. The Punch Buggy Express offers a unique ride to kids and adults alike, and CBC went along for a ride. I saw a call out from the city of Saskatoon, and they were looking for projects to animate downtown YXE. And I thought that this children's pedal bus that I had researched uh, would be the perfect fit because we have this stunning riverbank with all these child centric destinations. We've got 10 passengers that are sitting side by side and a driver with a steering wheel, but everyone except for the two passengers in the front have their own set of pedals and they're contributing to pedaling the pedal bus. I feel like the pedal bus brings so much joy to people that are sitting on benches, having picnics, that are cycling by. Um, it just brings joy to the cyclists that are on the pedal bus as well as people um, in the community that we pass. And that is it for us tonight. For news anytime, you can head to our website or our YouTube channel. Glenn will be back with more tonight at 11. Thanks for watching and have a great night.